Vsauce, Kevin here with the ultimate representation of good and evil, an epic battle of morality that has raged on game boards across the globe for over 2,000 years. Snakes and ladders. Wait, snakes and ladders? That's nothing but a really simple kids game, right? Wrong! While the rules are simple, the math, psychology, and hidden spiritual lessons are surprisingly complex. So to highlight that unique combination in a visual way, I commissioned an intricate version of the game that harnesses electricity to demonstrate the unpredictable gameplay. The circuit that's made as we play will not only show the path to victory, but will also reveal the meaning of life. Sort of. This custom game board was created by engineering YouTube wizard Alan Pan. The winner of this game of Snakes and Ladders will trigger this mystery box to do something. I. I seriously 100% do not know what's inside this box or what will happen when the first player reaches the final square, but we're about to find out together. I do know that it's powered by 16 AA batteries. Alan put it together in an afternoon and he promised me, he promised that it will not burn down my house. So that's good. Here's how it works. Allen 3D printed red and yellow game pieces that contain about 50 feet of stainless steel conductive thread. He's put a nail juncture at every snake's head and tail, on every ladder's top and bottom, and at the end of each row on the board. I'll start by hooking up both game pieces to this bolt and tightening this nut down on it. I'll be red and you will be yellow. And as we play, I'll wrap the steel thread around these junctures, which will weave a path up ladders and down snakes to show a trail of each player's movement on the game board. Here's the important part. When the winning player's piece touches a node on the final square, that will complete a circuit to the battery powered mystery box. And whatever this thing does, it will do. Now let's climb some ladders and slide down some snakes. Or shoots. You probably know this game as Shoots and Ladders since that's the name Milton Bradley gave it in 1943 when it was imported to the US and sold for 50 cents. I guess they thought snakes were scary and weird, which they are, but the game actually goes back much, much further than your Grandpa Joe. It actually originated in India in about the second century BC and was meant to teach children the importance of karma and kama existences push and pull between one's destiny and the actions that disrupt the path to that destiny. The gameplay is obviously very simple. The two players started at square one, which may actually be where we get the phrase starting at square one, and then roll a die. Four. The player then moves that number of spaces. If you land at the bottom of a ladder, then you get to climb the ladder to that space. If you land at the head of a snake, then you have to slide backwards down to the snake's tail. And if there's nothing on the space, then it's the other player's turn. The first player to get to the final 100th space wins. That's it, that's the game. In the official rules, you need an exact roll to reach the 100th space. So like if you're two spaces away, you need to roll a two to win, but that can get pretty tedious. Most people just call it a win when you roll at least high enough to get to the final space and I'll do the same. Boards historically labeled ladders that advance your piece with good virtuous actions like generosity or learning. Conversely, snakes were depicted along with vices such as greed or gluttony. Navigate the snakes and ladders successfully and the winner escapes samsara, life's cycle of death and rebirth to reach moksha or salvation. Who knew a game literally recommended for three-year-olds was this profound. Just looking at this board, I can see that snakes are a lot worse than the ladders are beneficial. But how much worse? We can figure out the breakdown of this board's 10 ladders and 11 snakes. 
From four to 16 is a plus 12. 12 to 33 is a plus 21. 49 to 51, plus two. Not much of a help there. And 88 to 92 is a plus four. All right, snakes. 21 to three, that's a minus 18. 50 to 11, minus 39. 93 to 25, minus 68. It's like falling down a well. And 99 to 58, minus 41. All right. So the advantage of ladders, we're looking at 118 divided by 10 equals plus 11.8 per ladder. And for snakes, we're looking at 388 divided by 11 equals minus 35.27 per snake. It's almost exactly three times worse to land on a snake than it is beneficial to land on a ladder. And there's an additional snake in there just to make it tougher because why not? And this whole thing is probably just random. No, it's not. An integral message of this game is that it's harder to follow a path of good than it is to follow a path of bad. It's just easier to slide down into bad choices and bad habits than it is to lift yourself up with virtuous deeds. And as subtle as the game's hidden moral lessons may be, get a load of the unseen mathematical operation. This absolutely ancient board game is actually a 101 state absorbing Markov chain, a series of events that depends on the state of the prior event, which we first explored in Perondo's Paradox, that could theoretically go on forever, especially when you've got so many punishing snakes. And if you want to make absolutely sure the next time you're playing this with your five-year-old sister Sally that it doesn't last nine hours, well, you can't! I mean, it's not likely that a game will last the rest of your lives, but with just the right combination of rolls and snakes, it actually could, because Snakes and Ladders isn't a game of skill. There's nothing you can do to speed up a win, and there's no mistake that you can make to lose. All you can do is roll and see what happens. Okay, this is taking a while. What if I really, really want to know when this game will end? I can use board states and random rolls to run a Monte Carlo simulation that gives us the most common length of our Snakes and Ladders game and the odds of any given length. Two, three, four, four, four. Yes, we are close. One, two, three, Four for you. One, two, three, four. All right, look, uh, until this moment, I had left this battery out for a reason. I was worried that, I don't know, I would have messed something up and then this thing would have done something and then I wouldn't have been able to put whatever happens back in here. So the fact is we're at 98 and it's my turn. And as long as I don't roll a one, it is the actual moment of truth. I've reached the end of the board. I've successfully ascended ladders and overcome the pitfalls of evil snakes. So I'm gonna put this battery in now. It is fully charged. As they say, it is lit. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna move everything so that you get the best possible look at whatever is about to happen next. <laughs> don't roll a one, don't roll a one, don't roll a one, don't roll a one. Okay, four. All right. Oh, why am I so nervous about this? Here we go. Oh, die, oh, die, oh, die! Ah. One, two, three. <laughs> it was actual, oh my gosh. It was actual snakes. Well, not actual snakes, but spring loaded snakes. <laughs> the, the, the gearing up of it was actually almost as scary as the exploding snakes themselves. Oh. 
Snakes and Ladders is a remarkable combination of mathematics and human psychology that was invented centuries before the stochastic techniques needed to analyze it were known, let alone to board game designers. Think about it, a game intended for children needs to average just the right length. Too short and it's not interesting enough, too long and it gets boring. Snakes and Ladders nailed this so perfectly that thousands of years later Later, kids are still growing up playing the game, and that isn't an accident. Billions of people across 100 generations have played Snakes and Ladders without even considering the deep story of numbers, morality, and the essence of human existence buried below its childish facade. In describing the Hindu board game Leela, which is a 72 space version of Snakes and Ladders, Harish Jahari said, there is really only one game. The game in which each of us is a player acting out his role. And while sometimes in life we land on ladders that launch us ahead and other times we step on snakes that slide us back, you gotta just pick up the die and give it another roll. Because the game goes on until eventually you reach your goal. Whether that's reaching Nirvana or triggering a mystery box of springy snakes. And as always, thanks for watching.